So let's get back to the beginnings. Um, so this is, of course, a quick history timeline going back to uh, before California was actually California, before it was even part of the US. There's certainly history to look at here. And um, we're going to talk each about uh, each of these. But it's definitely a lot of adventure and a lot of pioneers, a lot of innovators that came to this area that decided to put a lot of risk um, on what they're going to do. And um, there, there's not a sure business plan <laughs> all the way up to probably till the 1990s. That's when um, Napa Valley definitely was uh, a, an area that came to um, true fruition on its promises. So before 1823, which is the year when the Franciscan mission was uh, founded in Sonoma, this very much considered uh, uh, a very dangerous area, right? There was the Russian fur traders up in Fort Ross. There were little bears and indigenous tribes, certainly not a a whole lot of uh, winemaking or market for wine. The first planting actually happened around the town of Yontville, and it was the founder of the town, George C. Yont, who planted uh, vineyards. Uh, well, first just vines, let's just put it that way. And it was actually a land grant that he was given from General Vallejo, after whom the town of Vallejo is named for, and um, he decided to, of course, settle down on this large tract of land, which is actually a very large percentage, probably covers about three AVAs now, that he was given. And um, that's where basically winemaking began. Anybody wants to guess what grape variety he may have planted? Sorry? Mission. Mission. There's a winner. You should get something. No. Yes, no. exactly. I'll take your wine. <laughs> There you go, we'll start with that. So Mission Grape, which is of course a Vitis vinifera, right? So it's not an indigenous grape. It's also known as Criora or Pais at other parts of the American continent. But it certainly is a grape that came with the missions, right? It actually was planted further south first, and those were the cuttings that you could get, right? At this point, you couldn't really pick. There wasn't about Cabernet Sauvignon or Chardonnay or anything like that. Now, um, after the 1830s, um, there, there was still obviously very few settlers in the area, but then gold rush, right? San Francisco grows overnight to tens of thousands of people that come into town, so it is really the Wild West, right? And these people, besides looking for gold, they also are thirsty. <laughs> they actually like to drink wine or whatever else they can get their hands on that is not just water. So the first industry boom came right on the back of the gold rush where it's basically um, trying to feed the local market, which is not actually existing. What happened after this? The gold rush happens, of course, but then we also gain independence. Okay, so that's when actually Napa County as uh, the first named district comes around. And then once the volume starts growing, of course, more immigrants come to town, not just for the gold rush, but making business on the back of the gold rush, be that creating hotels or building wineries or, um, you know, Schramsberg wine that you guys are drinking. So Jacob Schramm was one of the immigrants that came. He originally came to New York first. And you know what was his profession? Anybody? Was he a winemaker? No. He was actually a barber. Believe it or not. And even the first couple of years when he moved to San Helena, he was being a barber and then talking to Charles Krug, who founded his winery just a few years pr prior to this in 1861, convinced him that this is a very lucrative business, you should get, it, get into it. So actually Jacob Schramm was the first one who planted hillside vineyards in where Schramsberg Winery is now. 